Happy New Year, viewers, and welcome back to Just Short of Fantastic. Like many of you, I was obsessed with last year's US presidential election, and I was a bit shocked and a bit devastated by Trump's win. And with the impending US inauguration day, I would like to share with you the book I was reading at the time that the election results came out, because I believe it has a great message of love, hope, and faith that we all, now, more than ever, need to hold in our hearts going forward. The Mountain Shadow by Gregory David Roberts. It is a fiction with many themes, but the main ones are the search for love and faith. This book is amazing. It made me laugh and cry and think about myself and about the earth and about all of humanity. It's a great story, it's essentially a love story, but it's also a profound meditation on our common humanity and the connections between us. The Mountain Shadow is a sequel to Roberts's previous fictionalized autobiography, Shantaram. You don't have to read Shantaram to start reading this one, but really, why wouldn't you? That book was amazing too. But this book picks up two years later, following Lynn, the main character, an Australian on the run in Bombay after escaping from an Australian prison. He's deeply entrenched in the Bombay crime scene, but he's still pining after the love of his life, Carla, who has since married a Bombay media mogul slash rising politician. This is really just the story of how Lynn and Carla finally get together, with a whole lot of crime, corruption, war, intrigue, and philosophy along the way. So there's a little something for everyone in here. Roberts writes one heck of a story, but what I really love are his characters. Every character in this book, whether they're a good person, a bad person, or in that shadowy place in between, as many of them are, is larger than life, and they will walk into your heart and become a part of you. Forever. I love Robert's style. He mixes page-turning action, scathingly hilarious exchanges of wit, and mind-opening philosophical musings that draw you in and leave you wanting more. The dialogue always feels natural, despite how twisted and unreal some of the characters are, and the event pacing is brisk. At nearly 900 pages, this book may appear long, but trust me, it is a quick read. There are the occasional lengthy paragraphs of spiritual and philosophical descriptions, but these are an intrinsic part of the novel's charm. They in no way impede the action, but rather add to the journey. The story is punctuated and sometimes driven by Bombay's many religious and political divisions, but there are many philosophical arguments in this novel that have been part of humanity's discourse for centuries and will remain with us for centuries more. So while the action of the novel takes place in a very specific time and a very specific place, late to mid-90s Bombay, India, the underlying currents of spiritualism, philosophical debate, and the search for connection are timeless and applicable to all cultures. This is a part of Robert's message. We are one, no matter who we are or where we are. And that is what makes this novel an important one in the current social, political, and environmental climate. The biggest message in this book is that love is a choice that we make. Things might look bleak right now, but we need to remain strong and united and continue to make that choice and defend it. There is no room for hate in our destiny as a collective species. Please read this book and share the love. In all things that really matter, we are one. Love and faith, trust and empathy, family and friendship, sunsets and songs of awe. In every wish born in our humanity, we are one. Our humankind, at this moment in our destiny, is a child blowing on a dandelion, without thought or understanding. But the wonder in the child is the wonder in us, and there's no limit to the good we can do when human hearts connect. This is the truth of us. This is the story of us. Thank you, and stay just short of fantastic.